You're listening to the Salty Sex Cast with Mariah and friends. Minimize the fear. Expand your awareness. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I'm so excited to introduce another friend um, to all of you. And I say friend because we're already besties. We've only like talked for a couple minutes, but um, I have Mary Ellen Reader here and she's the co-founder of a really, really cool device. So I'm really excited to talk about this because I'm very intrigued because personally it would definitely affect me, but this was a uh, Yarlap, which is an award-winning femtech device. So welcome Mary Ellen. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to kind of dive into the, the weird and the taboo with you. So it's going to be, it's going to be exciting. <laughs> The weird and the taboo. Yes. I hear that. And I'm like, sure, sure, sure. But that's my life. And so I'm like, cool. I own it and I love it. And I'll never shy away from it. Obviously you haven't being in where, what you're doing now. Um, but it's a very interesting. So first of all, what is your lab? So the your lab, we are an FDA cleared medical device. So we're a bona fide medical device to treat female urinary incontinence. So Anybody who like laughs, sneezes, coughs, pees themselves, or something like that. We all know somebody. Yes. Um, <laughs> you're funny. Yeah. Me. Yes. yes. Um, we treat that at home. So it's, it, you don't have to go anywhere. It comes prepackaged to you, and you just do everything at home and you no longer have that issue. And, and that's what we do. Yeah. So I'm going to, uh, tell you a little bit about my history. Um, so I have three kiddos, all vaginal births and had a really hard time with urinary incontinence after, um, even after my first, and then it just got worse and worse. And I was like, you know what? That's just part of the course. Like that's just being a mom. That's totally normal. And then hearing other people are like, oh, but I've, I've found a way to fix it. I've been you know, either doing exercises, um, and I'm not as bad. And I was like, really? Okay, whatever. But I was such a busy mom. I didn't think I deserved to go find answers. Right. I'm like, I'm, I'm living for these kids instead of myself until finally, um, I needed to have a catheter put in for something and they couldn't get it in because my, um, bladder was, uh, so prolapsed. It kinked my urethra and it was really, I was really struggling for a lot of things. And I ended up getting a medical, um, or a bladder sling put in to help with that without doing any research. As soon as I was diagnosed with prolapse bladder and uterus, I had a hysterectomy and a bladder sling. I was like, okay, cool. We solved it. And then hearing all these other things that I could have tried before going really invasive, very extremely invasive. Honestly, it was a horrific healing process. Um, probably took me a good year before I urinated normally and could feel like a full bladder and everything. And so I was like, wow, I really wish I did more studying on this. So hearing this device, I was like, ah, I love it. It, This would have been something that could have really supported that. So what made you come up with this device (laughs) and what makes it different from others that say the same thing? Yeah. So it's a weird story. Uh, my dad is a medical device engineer and he designed a bunch of stuff for, um, muscle pain. So mm-hmm. like knee pain, back pain, and that kind of stuff. But he was also on a team that designed a similar device for the national healthcare systems in France, Great Britain, Scandinavia, Germany, where they have postpartum women. They give a device afterwards to train their pelvic floors again. And so he thought similarly, because well, he's never had kids, obviously. Um, he's never bared kids, (laughs) but he, uh, he assumed that there was something similar in the United States, that that was a similar program. And no, uh, there's nothing like that here. And we actually had a very close family friend. Um, if anybody here is, or listening is Midwestern, who know that an aunt really doesn't necessarily mean blood aunt. It can also mean like a really close friend, your neighbor, whomever. And we had a close friend who was an aunt and um, in that nature. And she had incontinence to the point where she had toilet, like uh, toilet trained. She had toilet mapped her entire life. 
And she knew exactly where all the bathrooms were everywhere. She didn't know where the bathroom was. She wouldn't go. And then it got to a point where she couldn't leave the house because she knew she had 15 minutes. She had 15 minutes from when she felt like that, like she had to go to the bathroom and it just, she didn't want to risk paying herself in public. So she stopped going out anywhere and her quality of life. Yeah. Yeah. Her quality of life just disintegrated. And so it wasn't like we woke up one day and we're like, we're going to create a medical device that's <laughs> FDA cleared. It was like, uh, we have the resources and tools to do this. Why don't we bring something to help her? Mm-hmm. And while we're at it, help other people. And it took years and thousands of pages of paperwork, but we got there. And my dad said, um, why don't we bring you along with this? And I had been doing Women for Women International at the time. And I was very into telling women about their wellness and about their rights, their voting, and they should be allowed to open bank accounts and yada, yada. Um, I have a lot of soapboxes that I stand on. And (laughs) (laughs) women's health was kind of one of them at the time. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I don't want to do just something for grandmas. And my dad looked at me and he said, that's extremely ignorant do some research, get back to me. Yeah. And within a few, I mean, within like an hour or so down the internet rabbit hole, I realized that it wasn't just grandma. It wasn't older people. Everybody, everybody has them. And it's one in three women in the United States have some form of urinary incontinence. And if that statistic doesn't blow your mind, I really have no idea what will. And I thought, this is so great. I can make a difference. And I can talk to people about really weird things and taboo things that make people uncomfortable, which is what I love. (laughs) And and I get to work with my dad. Why would I not do this? And so we kind of came together and were co-founders of Yar Lab. Um, And that's kind of how we came to be. And Yar Lab is an FDA cleared, like I said, an FDA cleared medical device. But what it does that I believe is so crucial to our results and our, our great results is that it does the workout for you. So we have all been told to do Kegel exercises Mm -hmm. and they're extremely hard to do. And there's a good chance you aren't doing them correctly. You might be using your rear end. You might be using your butt, your thighs, your abs. You might be working other muscles in addition to, or in place of your pelvic floor muscles when you think you're doing these. And the yard lap takes all of that guesswork away. And instead of thinking, okay, am I using the right muscles? Am I using it for the right amount of time? Um, am I in the correct position? All these questions, the yard lap sends a signal directly into your pelvic floor muscles and does everything for you. It takes all of that guesswork, throws it out the window, and it just does everything. And you just sit there. I like it just hearing that. Cause I, I remember having a friend say, yeah, but are you doing your deep kegels? I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, there's some that are like deeper and you can pulsate. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> there's so many different ways. Just like there's so many different ways. If you're considering like working out your abs, right. Mm-hmm. I do, however, have, and are familiar with like a a stim or tens unit, you know, where you have those patches mm-hmm. and they hook up to a dial that you can turn. And so I was already familiar with and how you're, you know, totally involuntary. Like if you put it on a bicep and turned it on, you're going to hit yourself. (laughs) You're not ready. And so I was like, what? No. And so when I saw, um, that's the similar technology that you all use, I was like, okay, I've already used this for, for muscle recovery from the gym, um, on the outside, you know, on my thighs, definitely, um, I always usually get my quads because I just work heavy on my legs, but to hear that that was something that can go internally, I was like, so amazed (laughs) Well that just like your dad probably was like, why don't we, why isn't there something like this in the U S or, um, a program like this to support post recovery, anything. And so one in three women, that's incredible. Oh, it's, it's incredible. And The biggest, because I know that we're really into, we're both really into myth busting. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest myths is that it's normal. Like 
peeing involuntarily is normal. And it's a badge that you get with motherhood and it just happens. And we only notice it when we're older and it's just kind of part of being a woman and you got to suck it up and deal with it. It's part of this new chapter in your life. And for me, whenever I hear that, I want to slap somebody because, because it's not true. And it's all about the tone of the pelvic floor muscles. And those muscles, we really don't know that they're there until we're trying to conceive or we're pregnant or postpartum, or if you're a very, if you're a big athlete and you have that repetitive motion, jumping, um, Mm -hmm. landing with intense force. And for me, I wish that we had talked more about the pelvic floor in school because it's a crucial foundational part of your wellness. It holds the uterus and your bladder and these visceral organs in their natural position. So when you're looking at drawings and everything, the reason why it's all there and why it's in those positions is because that pelvic floor is toned. And so when that pelvic floor, you know, loses tone, it atrophies, it sags, and we lose that position, everything shifts. And your poor bladder is at the bottom of that pyramid. So anytime that you apply that additional pressure, there's nothing there to hold it anymore and voluntarily leak yourself. And we're trained almost as, as women, I feel we're trained that that's normal and it is not, it's about the pelvic floor tone. You don't have to live with it. Just because something is common does not mean that it's normal. And this is one of the big reasons and instances where it really is not normal and you don't have to continue on living like this. Mm -hmm. You have a choice, you have options and knowing that there are things out there to support that, you know, just where I was like, okay, and I was so young getting that diagnosis of having, you know, um, bladder and uterus prolapse that I didn't understand why. And I just assumed, oh, it's because I had three kids so close together. Um, and didn't understand like how to heal myself afterwards. It was just kind of like, oh, okay. They were super easy deliveries. And so I assumed since they were so easy, I could just hop back into life normally. Um, so there was no postpartum recovery for me. And so understanding some of that to not just prevention side, but how it all works together and that self-care and just how all of that is inter- interconnected. Um, just like you said, I wish we learned about this in school. I wish I knew more and had more knowledge, um, and awareness to equip myself with what I need to take care of myself. So <laughs> silly. Like you just think, Oh, your body just does it automatically. Right. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And you think, I mean, we are superheroes, but I feel like everybody, once we're done, we're just like, everything will snap back into its position and it'll be fine. And I can be exactly how I was beforehand. It's like, you're, you do need a little bit of help and we do need to have the correct resources and tools available for us. Sadly, I think that the post, the pelvic floor is a missing piece to that because we aren't really told anything about that muscle and what it does and how to make sure that it's toned and healthy, uh, until we're at this point. And then you go down the internet rabbit hole and you, I don't know if you're like me, but you tend to self-diagnose and it just gets bleaker and bleaker and bleaker. There's (laughs) no hope for me. (laughs) Exactly. And and that's not true. That's not true. Please never anybody self-diagnose. Don't be, don't be like me. Um, but cause it's just like any other muscle. Once you get the proper tools and the resources and you know what to do and how to do it, you have this path and this journey that you can do to recovery. It's awesome. So <clears throat> it's a device. It goes inside of your vaginal canal. Mm-hmm. It has electric electrical stimulus to make the muscles contract, just like you right. would if you were exercising your, your own However, it's going to get the specific ones. Um, just like you said, if you think you're doing it and really you're getting your rear or your like abs or anything, you know, it's specific. Um, how often is this what someone uses? 
Like yes, how but- long is it? Is it like, Hey, 15 minutes a day for the rest of your life? Or is it, um, you know, I don't know. I'm just throwing times out there. <laughs> no, I think that's no. Cause I, I do feel like a lot of the times people say, you know, this is super easy. It's convenient. You do it 20 minutes until you die. And it's like, okay, well, that's a little, that's a little time consuming. Um, yeah. this is, it depends because everybody's pelvic floor is at a different tone. Absolutely. And so we say anywhere between three to five days a week, and it takes 15 to 20 minutes, depending on which program you use. And you go until you get the tone that you're looking for. And then once you get there and you're treated, we suggest that you go into maintenance mode. And that's once a week, once every other week, you know, your body Mm -hmm. more than anybody else, more than a user manual or anything like that. So you listen to your body once you get to maintenance mode, and maybe you need help once a week to do it, to keep that tone. Because again, the pelvic floor muscles are like any other muscles in your body. You need to maintain tone. And once you get the results, otherwise you lose it. Right. So for us three to five days a week. Um, and then once you get to the tone and for a lot of women, it can be anywhere between 12, two to 12 weeks. Hmm. So anywhere within that time, some people are, are farther past that 12 week mark. You know, if you have a really weakened pelvic floor, you're probably looking at farther along than that. Um, but don't think that you're too far beyond repair. And I Mm -hmm. think a lot of women believe that, that they're Mm -hmm. just like, there's nothing else I can do. I can't do these on my own. This is just the way it's going to be. And we're just going to suck it up. Then again, don't, don't believe that. Don't fall into that, into that myth hole. Don't do that. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's just like, and even the jokes that everyone hears like, oh, mom's sneezing. She's going to cross her legs. You know, I just, I remember being like, but that's not fun. I don't want to have to cross my legs. I don't want to have to lift lighter at the gym when I really enjoy lifting heavy weight and I couldn't publicly because I'm going to piddle myself. Like it was not fun. Right. You know, and it felt like an excited little dog, like at the gym, like, oh my gosh. And then you lift, and you're like, okay, I'm going home. Um, so like, I, I'm super curious, what's the sensation like while you're going through treatment of it when it's turned on? Um, because I know what it feels like with like a stim or a tens unit, you get a little kind of, it's not it's like tingly. If you turn it up, sometimes it can get a little more prickly and and discomfort. Um, when you go too high, I think, um, but how does that feel internally? I'm curious. Yeah. So everybody, again, everybody's vagina (laughs) has a different sensation as I'm sure everybody knows that already. Uh, who's listening to this, but everybody has what? a different I thought we sensation. were all factory made. I, no, how <laughs> dare everybody else have something? How would dare everybody be unique? Um, but for most people, we get like a response of it feels like a firm handshake in the vagina, or it feels like fluttering, knocking. Um, mm. A lot of people are just like, no, it just feels like a muscle movement. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, that's yeah. extremely descriptive. Thank you. Um, but it's really comfortable. And I don't know why I said comfortable that way, but it's really comfy. (laughs) And we've had women who call into us because they accidentally fell asleep while using it. And they're worried that they, you know, they worked too hard or something like that. But the RLAP has a bunch of safety features in it because it goes in your vagina. So we put in every safety feature. Yeah. Yeah. We're like, uh, yeah, definitely needs this. It 100% needs that other one. Not going to shock you, electrocute you, you know? No, no. So it's, ex- <laughs> it's extremely comfortable. And again, we've had people who are like, I accidentally fell asleep. What do I do? And we're like, just take it out and wash it because it automatically stops after the program. So even if you fell asleep for two hours after the 15, 20 minutes, it's done. It turns itself off and you're just sleeping. Um, so it, keeping a toy inside you for a little exactly, bit longer. <laughs> exactly. But it's, I enjoy it because it's customizable to your own comfort. Mm. There aren't, it's not um, a one size fits all. Yeah. It is not a, a comfort. So the signal is not just a blanket signal. You can customize it to where you particularly find it comfortable. And we suggest, you know, once you find a firm muscle movement, stop, don't go past that. 
You don't want anything that's going to cause discomfort or anything like that. So we use plenty of lubrication because lube is your best friend Mm -hmm. and then insert it and pick your own comfort level. Don't look at anybody else. Nobody else's number matters, but it's all about your personal preference. Mm -hmm. I wish someone, everyone would just walk around with their Yarlap number, like tattooed on their forehead, just like a sleep number, so. you know, we should get rid of like the, we should get rid of like the little face tattoos that everybody's doing. And instead of like, you know, cute little things, just have like their Yarlap number right now. Yeah. I think yeah. that you're like, mm-hmm, that's yeah. right. Yeah. I, <laughs> Maybe that should be like our next marketing play. <laughs> See how that takes off. <laughs> um, yeah. Like I'm just thinking of like the sleep number, you know, how it's like everybody's walking around. They have like a little number next to their head, like a little Sims character, but it's exactly. really Oh, uh, that's great. Um, what are some other like success stories you've heard or just, you know, uh, from people? Yes. We know the yeah. data is out there and you've definitely researched this and this comes from, um, a place of medical devices. So of course it's gone through all of those hoops, just like you said, lots of paperwork, but what about the real people? I'd love to hear any stories that you could, that you can share. Yeah. So my favorite is, and I always love sharing this because, and I, I tell her all the time, uh, she made the AOK to use this, but she was, um, I think in her seventies when she started using the R lab and she would go to the bathroom um, involuntarily when she was sleeping. Mm. And that's where she got it originally. And she used it. She got great results. She stopped uh, going to the bathroom at night. Um, it was really affecting how her quality of sleep. And that's when she was like, okay, I need to do something because getting up every hour is just not cutting it anymore. hmm and she got the results that she was doing. She's like, I no longer pay myself. It's great. I'm getting like seven hours. Um, I think it's actually more like six, but she was still celebrating. Mm-hmm. And um, that's for me coming from somebody who sleeps like nine hours a day. That's me. The so six, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, is that a lot? Um, but she would give us updates, monthly updates. And they're always really positive. And she was so sweet and kind. And then she started talking about how it was affecting her sex life. And she said, you know, I haven't had an orgasm in decades and it's coming back. The sensation's coming back. And she would give us more like PG 13 related reviews of, you know, her journey. And the last one, the last one she gave us, um, which I adored was she and her husband had gone to the grocery store and they had sex in the parking lot in their car. And she wore that as a badge of honor. And oh, I thought, and she your said, 70s. She said, I love that. I know. And she said, I felt like a teenager. I did it in the car in a parking lot. And I thought, <laughs> this is the greatest thing <laughs> that That's anyone wonderful. could ever tell me. Um, I, I laughed so hard and it's, it's favorited in, in my inbox because I think that that being a part of that story, improving somebody's quality of life, I can't ask for anything better. It was yeah. just amazing. And she was so excited. And then we had another woman who bought it because she couldn't go to gym classes anymore. Mm-hmm. But she was so afraid when they would do jumping jacks, she'd be in the back and be like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not partaking in this. <laughs> I will not be paying myself a third in front of like 20 people. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so she stopped going to um, her fitness classes and she had similar story and her, her husband was the one that called us and he said, this is the greatest thing. I would like to buy one for every room in our house. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought this is so fantastic because it's great to hear when it's a team effort, um, when the partner knows what's going on and is trying to actively help. And I adore it when we have partners call into us, sometimes it's husbands, sometimes it's wives who call into us and they, they just, they know that their partner has this issue. They want to know if it will help and how to start this conversation. And so we kind of like almost have a template of how to get into that conversation without embarrassing or humiliating. And I love that, like just trying to help your partner (laughs) <laughs> and, and calling in to try to figure out how to help. That is so Aww. sweet and endearing. And 
I love that part of like a, a team dynamic um, of helping this person. I think that that is so sweet, but we have a lot of people who are um, fitness classes, weirdly. They they really want to go back and they want to feel far, part of that, mm. that team Community. group dynamic. They want yeah. to get back into it. And they're like, I'm tired of wearing black all the time. And I am tired of being in the back of the class. I used to be in the front riding the bicycles. I used to be in the front. I was the best and I'm in the back. Or sometimes I don't even go mm-hmm. unless I know it's a very empty class. And when people start to change the way that they live their life around this issue, I think that that's when we need to kind of step in and go, okay, well, this, what do we do about this? We have an intervention. Yeah. Right. How do you improve your quality of life? Because it is changing and you're not doing something that you used to love. So how do you change and get back to where you really, really want to be? Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's a fun story or both of those I think are really relatable. Um, too bad mother's day just passed because of everyone who, you know, get your mom one because you were the one who shot out of her cooter. <laughs> like you can do that. Just kidding. But, um, the, I, the, I, the universe, I'm really sorry, but this is going to be great for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I came from there. So I'm sure I did some of that damage. Here's this. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, uh, just knowing again, like there are interventions to support, um, getting to live normally again. Uh, just like you said, if there, if you are finding that you have to change your lifestyle to meet that need or to go around it. So it's not embarrassing or having to deal with it. I just want people to just like you were saying, just because it's common doesn't mean it's okay. Doesn't mean it's, um, like a normal thing that you have to live with. It's not, yeah, you have so many options to handle, um, all of these different changes that you, that happen in life. Right. I mean, we age, just like you said, muscles can change, but we can keep that one, um, to support the function it needs. Um, but so outside of urinary incontinence, you said sex life, it improves. Let's talk about that a little bit more. Yeah. So we all have seen the big headlines on um, platforms where they're like, you know, do this one exercise to be fire in the bedroom. This is the mm-hmm. mind blowing exercise. Everybody should do it. And inevitably it's always like the cable exercise. Mm-hmm. Another mess surrounding that that I'm not going to go down just yet is that Kegel exercises are not a one size fit all. Um, mm-hmm. They're not going to magically fix everything, especially if you have um, a tightened pelvic floor muscle, a super clenched one. Doing clenching exercises on an already clenched muscle that's not going to do you any favors. Mm-hmm. But we are kind of conditioned to think that these exercises will fix everything. They're magic. Yeah. And that's not necessarily the what case. we've been told forever. Yeah. yeah. Do your kegels, do your kegels, do that. And it's like, you know, if I, I, I had been doing them and I'm still peeing, like, I don't know how to. So. Right. Again, they're so hard to do. And then nobody tells you we have to do like thousands of them to get the benefits that you're reading about. Yeah. You're like, okay, I'm going to do, you know, 10 today and 10 tomorrow. And then I'm going to forget until the next time I remember. <laughs> I remember and- someone telling me do them at every red light as you're waiting for a red light. And I was like, what if I don't drive every day? And then there was a pandemic where no one went anywhere. So that doesn't work out very well. Anyway, sorry to interrupt you, but. No, because that's another one is that a lot of people say, you know, do them at every red light, do them at the stop signs. Anytime that you stop your car, do mm-hmm. them. You have to do so many of them to get the benefits, a little bit of the benefits that you read about. But going back to the original, you know, sexual aspect of it is that a lot of people think that doing these exercises will help with the vagina. Mm -hmm. Um, and the vagina is a tube (laughs) inside there. And a lot of people, I think get that confused with like your Volvo vaginal area. Mm -hmm. And it's just like a blanket term for that area in general, but it doesn't, it, the, the exercise tones your pelvic floor muscles and that helps with that feeling and the sensation down there. So 
where your clitoris is kind of like an iceberg. You see 20% of it, you see the clitoral gland or the clitoral bulb, and the rest of it's actually inside. And for some women, it wraps around their inner thighs. Some of it wraps around the anus, which is why some women find anal super pleasurable. And some people are like, I don't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so everybody, again, everybody's different and everybody's clitoris kind of looks different. Um, but in all in all, it kind of looks like a wishbone. Yeah. If you want to think about it in a, in a visual aspect of it but your clitoris runs along your pelvic floor muscles. So when you are clenching and doing these Kegel exercises, if you think back to the last time you had an orgasm and you have a pulsating feeling, that pulsating feeling is your pelvic floor muscles contracting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when you are doing these exercises, these pelvic floor exercises correctly, um, and that's the key part, when you're doing these exercises correctly, your body kicks into muscle memory and it goes, we know how to do these exercises. We know what we're doing and we can do it really well. We can do it properly and we can do them strong. So you all have this wonderful experience, this um, great response to the orgasm because your pelvic floor knows exactly what it's doing. Mm -hmm. So that's why you see everywhere, do these exercises in the bedroom to be fantastic, yada, yada. Um, The key is to do the exercises correctly and properly so that muscle memory kicks in and you have this great mind blowing response to the orgasm, um, to these exercises. And that's the whole, the whole aspect within that is that it's all interconnected. They're not compartmentalized, uh, you know, bladder health, sexual health, vaginal health. They're not all different compartments. They all intertwine together and they all come to not a head, but they all come to work together and, one of the really great parts is that you have this great response to the orgasm. You have this mind blowing orgasm because you know how to do this exercise and you know how to do it properly. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, I think a really key happy part of this exercise, you know, you get this amazing benefit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, then there's always the, um, the myth of like a loose vagina. Um, I, I hate that it's still a myth. Cause I'm like, we have talked about this people. This is nothing new. It expands when, you know, aroused, um, it expands. It's like this really, really, um, flexible tissue. How else are we having babies? Like it's just what? And so to then say, um, I, I think I, my biggest peeve, is, uh, to tighten the vagina, right. To tighten the vagina, please your partner more. And I'm like, what the fuck? What about me? (laughs) It should be also about me too. Um, yeah. (laughs) So that's always like when you do see those headlines or magazine little, you know, clickbait, uh, that say that for those Kegel exercises, I think those are always the ones that I, I roll my eyes to. I'm like, all right, let's see what you have to say that someone else hasn't already said, um, or that is it actually really incorrect. Um, but what are some things that you have seen or, or that, um, I'm sure so much of you telling people about your lap is also educating them about public floor, how all of that works, some of the myths, busting some of those myths. So what's probably some of the things that you're like, we have to say this all the time. And I hate that we're still saying it, but we are still needing to say it. I think that it would be the, what you just said, where it's like, um, tightening the vagina. Mm -hmm. It's pelvic floor muscle that needs tone and it just needs a little help and needs a little tender love and care. (laughs) Um, (laughs) the myth about the, the loose vagina infuriates me because that does not exist. Uh, again, tone of the pelvic floor muscle. That's where it's at. That's where it's the foundation. It is the root. It is so important. It's a key connector to all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and the fact that the clitoris runs along it, the the fact that it holds the bladder, uterus, the visceral organs into its natural position, the way that it is supposed to hold and, and be the foundation for all of that. And if you let that go, if you let that tone go, your back compensates for this. So a lot of times people have unexplained back pain 
mm-hmm. because your back is coming in to compensate what your pelvic floor is trying was supposed to do. And your back is not supposed to be doing what the back is supposed to be doing plus what the pelvic floor is supposed to be doing. That's not how the anatomy structure was set up to be. And so eventually that back will just go, you know what? No, I'm not doing this. Thank you. Goodbye. And <laughs> that load, that structural load goes to your knees next. And then you have unexpected knee pain. And it's just, it's so important because it's not just about the bladder. It's not just about sex, it's about structural load of your body. And it all comes from this muscle. Yeah. Yeah. Right in the middle of your body. (laughs) Yeah. And yet we don't talk about it Mm -hmm. and we don't know that it is there. And we end up blaming different things. We end up blaming our knees. We end up blaming our back, our vagina, um, which have, they have nothing to do with the 10 pound baby I had. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I feel like these are just, (laughs) they're the innocent scapegoats essentially Mm. for this big issue, but we never talk about it because most of the time women don't even know that the pelvic floor muscle exists or they don't know where it's located. Um, they can't identify where it is. And I understand that because we physically can't see it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's not like a penis or we can see it. Um, it's isolated, tucked up inside of your body, but most of the time we don't even know that it's there. And we've had some of our people who call into us, we've had to explain where the vagina even is, Mm. what the vagina has to do with all of these things. And for me, I'm like, I am providing um, education that I think should already be fundamental. It should be had in every classroom. Mm-hmm. this body part needs to be so well known that it's just, there's no problem talking about it because every single person has one. <laughs> so why don't we all know about it? Um, I mean, I do know why we don't talk about it because <laughs> the embarrassing quote, but yeah. for me, I just think that we, we do need to talk about why it's so important. It's not just like, I think that we, we, when we discuss it, it's just like, okay, yeah, it's another body part. Cool. Mm -hmm. But it's so important and vital to the overall way that your body works. Mm -hmm. It's so important. But yeah, I think that that's like a big myth is, you know, kegels are one size fits all. Everybody should do them. Nope. (laughs) Again, no, that's not true. Don't fall for that. Um, Just because everybody pees after they have babies. Nope not true tone of the pelvic floor. Um, and it's all these different things, the, you know, loose vagina, no myth, pelvic floor. And so it's all of these different things all stem from the pelvic floor muscles. And if we just knew about them and knew what they did, we wouldn't have these myths. We wouldn't have any of these issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where can folks find more information? (laughs) <laughs> so they want to keep talking to me about this. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can go to our, our website, Y A R L A P yarlap.com. And we're also on Instagram and Facebook. So if anybody wants to talk to us there, we're, we're very responsive and we're happy to talk about all things, pelvic floor, sexual response related. We're all open over there. So I'm happy to answer any questions. That's awesome. Um, the other thing is price point, right? I'm sure that's something that folks bring up when, um, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I have, a like doctor's office grade tens unit, um, just under a thousand dollars that I think I paid for this. Right. And so it's, it wasn't like a cheap thing. Um, and then comparing this device to some of the other things that are out there, um, where does it land? I think it lands middle high. Okay. Um, middle high, because again, we go through so many hoops to do what we do as a medical device. We go through so many quality controls. We have to use the highest quality component. It's going inside Um, a body. Yes. Yeah. It's going inside of a very sensitive part of the body where like, you don't want to have anything happen. So we go through a lot of stuff to ensure that all safety features are not only that they meet that, that minimum, but they go way, way above it. But 
that we work, Mm -hmm. that there is no effort involved in it, Mm -hmm. that what you pay for is what you get, that you don't have to sit there and think, okay, now I'm going to clench along with it, or I have to clench, I have to keep it inside of me the entire time. This is something that you insert like a tampon and you just sit there, you know, watch a sitcom or something. And after the 20 minute episode, you're done for the day. And you only have to do that three times a week, four times a week. Um, you don't have to leave your house for it. It comes directly to your door. There are so many convenience features within it, I think. And it's not a reoccurring thing. You know, you're not constantly going out and needing to have to buy a subscription for it. Mm-hmm. Um, you have this set cost and that is what it is. And we work well with physical therapists. We do work with a few physical therapists in OBGYN offices where they tell, you know, they look at the girl and they say, do your Kegel exercises. If you don't think you can do this, here is, here is this, Mm. or here, here are similar products that do that, you know? And I think that that's really important that you are told to do exactly what you do, but you also do it. And we help you do that. We help you do exactly what you were instructed to do because it's so freaking hard to do them on our own. And yeah. you have to do, again, you have to do so many, you have to do thousands, thousands. And if that doesn't seem like a lot, try doing them at every stop sign and tell me how many you do. <laughs> and then well, times that for the rest of your life. Right. Well, and then there's so many different ones. Like I just remember like reading like a programs, right. You know, you're pulsating, you go deeper, you go higher. I'm like, how do I know if I'm deeper or higher? I, I just, <laughs> you're like trying I, to like take a mirror down there. And yeah, like, Am I, right? Is this deeper? And then mm-hmm. I don't, yeah. I don't know. So that's the, that's, I think, again, it's the beauty of the art lab is that there's you just no put guesswork. It in. Yeah. yeah. All that guesswork's I think, gone. I think that's great. And you know, and I'm sure even with, um, you know, uh, that it's the no work type thing. And I, it's so funny how we are in, and I would say mostly American society culture says, if it's not work, it's not worth it. You haven't earned it. Right. It's yeah. just it's so silly, this stigma that we have, but I'm like, you did the work you did the work. So we don't have to like, there's so work involved. There's so lots of technology and, and, um, things that back this. So I just, I think it's really, really cool. Um, never in my life thought that this same technology could be used for this. And I was like, duh, it can, it's still a muscle. Like, I don't know why, like, this was so surprising when I stumbled upon it, I was like, yes, please come on the podcast. So I'm just so excited to talk about it, but, um, you know, anything that any, what's typically maybe the hesitation most folks have around using it. We might've just called them out price point and like the lazy, like the, like I'm not working, but you're still doing it. I think, yeah, though the price point I think is a big one, but you have to put it into comparison of what you're spending already. You know, are you buying a lot of clothes to fit this particular instance? You know, have you changed your entire clothes to be black? That's a lot of money. Um, Are you constantly rebuying and restocking a certain product? Mm Mm-hmm monthly, bi-monthly, um, you know, for the rest, theoretically for the rest of your life, that's a, that's a big cost. If you add that all up, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then you have to think about the laundry. I know this is, you know, out of the box, but think about all the extra laundry that you have to do the detergents you have to go through, um, because you've accidentally gone to the bathroom on yourself. Um, but this is just, you know, a one set cost and, you get to do all of this at home in the comfort of your own home mm-hmm. and it's easy and it's small. It's not going to be, um, we didn't design this to startle you. So it's going to be a very it's comfortable, big, giant. <laughs> yeah. it's not like that. Don't worry. It's about the size of a tube, of t- uh, size of a tube of lipstick mm-hmm. and you insert it like the, you, you insert it into the vagina. We had, um, another funny one is we had a woman who she travels for work on airplanes and she during takeoff, she would go to the bathroom, put it in, sit down. And then by the time they got to the certain altitude, she would go to the bathroom and take it out and wash it. And she was done and she got to do that. And then that, that was it. So it's, nobody has to know that you're using it. It's super discreet. Uh, it's mm-hmm. customizable for your comfort. And 
we have really great results again, because you're not putting in all that guesswork. You're not running yourself in circles mentally of, am I using the right muscle group? Am I doing it for the right amount of time? Am I going to get the benefits? Mm -hmm. Um, when do I get the benefits? All these different things rushing through your head. You can just throw that out the window with the comfort that everything is being done for you. And again, you can allow yourself to have that little self-care, that little tender, loving care because you deserve it. Mm -hmm. Um, and your body will, you know, thank you in the long run because you're, (laughs) you're helping realign everything. And I think that that is so important, but I think that the, the price but also, is it comfortable? Um, yeah. Yeah. Is, is it going to hurt? Like, is it going to be weird? Am I going to just hate it? And then spend this money? I mean, cause I'm looking at the price point. Right. And I'm like, there's some sex toys that are more than this, right. That are really popular right now. And some people don't like them at all. So you're willing to spend that to at least experiment. If you like that toy spending this to experiment, to see you know, the results of something that really affects one out of three or yeah, one out of three, that's massive. So. Yeah. And again, it is, I personally think it's comfortable. Um, again, it's a size of cheap lipstick. It is small and nobody has to see it. Nobody needs to know that you're doing it. We had a woman who she laughed because she's like, my husband retired and now he's all the time. He's home all the time. He <gasps> never leaves. He never wants to leave me alone. And so I don't know when I'm going to do this. And she was like, never mind, I figured it out because I we, we watch the news together. I just I do it and then during commercial break, I get up and I leave. <laughs> and I was like, brilliant, brilliant, yeah. fantastic. It's no again, nobody needs to know. And if mm-hmm. that, you know, if you don't want to stand up on a soapbox like me and let everybody in the world know that you use it, you don't need to. You don't have to. That's no one's business but any but yours, but just, you know get the resources and the proper tools to help you regain that control, regain, um, that tone, that muscle Mm -hmm. control. Mm -hmm. And however you decide to do that, however you decide to improve the quality of your life is a phenomenal step in the right direction. Love it. Love it. So, I mean, just like you said, it bleeds into so many different things, social aspects to just self-care to how you view yourself too. And it's like, Oh, I'm broken. Oh, well, you know, it's more like I get it. You get to support that side of you. Um, super fun and, um, really cool. I'm so glad that we met and got a chat about all of this. Thank uh, you. Yeah. I was going to ask another question. Then it left me because I got distracted by your website <laughs> for a second. And I was like, yeah, well, it really is small. Like it's just, <laughs> um, it's a, it's a small little guy small little guy, yeah. um, that packs a large punch, right? Large, yeah. big impact, large, yeah. <laughs> big impact. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's really awesome. I am so glad that we got to chat about this and that all our listeners get to hear about this. There are options. If this is something that doesn't affect you, that's okay. There's plenty of others that you can go say, you know, for all of our listeners, uh, go scream it from the rooftops, go buy your mom one for mother's day. I don't know, like have fun with it. That's so great. Um, one more time, Mary Ellen, where can they all find this product? And um, more information? At, <laughs> you can go find it at yarlap.com again, Y-A-R-L-A-P.com. And we're at the same thing for Instagram, Y-A-R-L-A-P-O-T-C um, on Instagram and Facebook. And you can come and chat with us and talk with us. We always like answering questions. So, um, definitely come in and hang out. Love it. Well, I'm just so glad that you're on social media. Cause we were just chatting a little bit before, like it, it's fun. It is like this little dance of like, Ooh, do I belong here? Am I going to piss the, the social media gods off or am I going to get my wrist slapped when it's, it's a journey that is, it's a medical device. You are not selling pornographic images. You are not selling sex. Like it is just oh, blows yeah, but my I mean, mind. If you, if, and even if you, then, if you ask them, yeah, and yeah. If you ask then, them, it's like sex all the time, and we're like, no, it's not. It's really, really not. I just, I, I am so over social media blocking the dumbest things when it really is. This is sexual wellness. This is intimate wellness. This is personal wellness. I just, it's so silly, so dumb, 
but that's an episode for another day, maybe like 10 that we've already done. It's okay. I'll continue to whine about it because I'm tired of having to like think outside the box on how to get social media and salty sex cast is in our name too. So it's, I'm surprised that we just haven't been banned altogether, but you know, that's the name of the game. But I know. And, and I think that it's one more thing about social media. It's, it's just like rolling dice. We mm-hmm. don't know if it's going to piss somebody off and, or if we're going to, if they're going to let it slide today. Um, but yeah, they're like, it goes against our guidelines, our they're community standards. About- so they yeah, don't tell like, what they are. Yeah. And you're like, okay, well, like, where do I, where did I, where did I go against it? I don't know. Cause you're just talking about, you know, sexual health, but um, you're over here talking about mental health. Well, sexual health directly relates to mental health. Ding, so ding, ding. why are you? Yes, <laughs> yes exactly. Oh, it makes, it's infuriating. And it's just, it, and we're making it scarier if social media has that control over it, right. What we see and what we don't, like, I just think it's just even more scary than it's like what information is leaking out that we don't want leaked out. Um, but if we have all a lot of the good and it combats anything that could be bad out there, let us fly, man. I don't know, but thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I'm so excited um, to have you on and get to know you and congratulations on your award winning. Actually, you know what? We didn't even talk about this. Let us know <laughs> what is the award that, uh, your love received and, uh, tell us a little bit about that. Cause you said you yeah. were really exciting. Yeah. So we were, it was a few years ago, but we won the women's health Fem tech award and we, I, they had done like an internal poll of like what they would, what, stood out, um, in Mm. this realm and we were nominated and then we, we won in our little section. And I got the email from the editor. Um, they like randomly emailed us and they said, Hey, you've been selected, yada, yada. And I thought, um, if this is a joke, this is extremely cruel. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Am I supposed to like pay? Um, I didn't know that women health knew that I existed, but thank you so much. And wow. then they told, and then, you know, a few months later, they told us we won. And as soon as I got the email, I cried and I told my dad and then I cried and I called my mom and, um, I told everybody, I told all of my friends, I was so excited. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, again, I have that saved in my inbox as well, because it's just like, it brings me so much joy that our tiny little company was recognized for doing something really well. So I, um, wear that as a badge of honor, probably, probably forever, probably forever. So cool. Congratulations. Well-earned, um, just amazing outside of the box thinking of, of things that affect so many people and, um, wonderful. I love it. Um, for all of our listeners, thank you again for tuning in. Just want to remind you all that we keep our program ad free because we have our wonderful Patreon community. If you want to become a patron, please head over to patreon.com forward slash salty sex cast. And just like everything else in the world, because it has sex in the name, you have to actually type in the address. You can't just search for us on Patreon um, because we're adult content, but come be a part of our community. Um, and and we have lots of great freebies, giveaways. Uh, we get together and chat and you also get the episodes for free. Like just so many great things to be a patron as well as keeping our program ad free. So thank you all really appreciate you, Mary Ellen, Mary Ellen. Thank you so much for coming on and we'll see you all next week. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the salty sex cast. Ready for round two? Find us on Facebook.